This is a re-upload of an interview that uh, Rich and I were going to do with a gentleman called Stephen Bassett uh, about UFOs and volcanoes and stuff. Uh, Stephen Bassett didn't show up to the interview. We were sitting on a Zoom call, Rich and I. And since he didn't show up, uh, Rich said, hey, why don't I just pretend to be this guy? I was like, okay, whatever. So, because the way Rich does stuff off the cuff, he, he goes on weird tangents. He does silly shit. So, we, uh, it's, it's not particularly funny, but it's just Rich being Rich and seeing that Rich passed away uh, yesterday. I, I figure after... Uh, I, I, I would I would upload this. Um, the reason it was taken down is the director of the documentary got angry with us on another interview uh, with Rich being Rich, and he struck both of the videos. Uh, and he used the excuse that we had the trailer footage in the interviews. That's the reason. That's the leverage he used with YouTube to have both of those videos struck. So uh, enough time's gone by since then. It's been a few months uh, that I'm gonna trim out all the trailer shit and re-upload it. So we have these two things that Rich did uh, up and just just because uh, I, I miss him. I miss not being able to do stupid shit on the internet, either streaming games or uh, <laughs> interviewing and mocking people who believe in very silly things like that uh, astrology predicted the pandemic and that uh, the, the the weird UFO people and stuff like that. So um, I hope you enjoy this not very funny interview with uh, Rich pretending to be Stephen Bassett. Thank you. All right, Mr. Stephen Bassett, how are you doing today? That's me, Stephen Bassett. I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. I, I hear that you are an expert on uh, UFOs and drugs. I'm all those things, you're right. Uh, I know a lot about the UFOs, the aliens, uh, and the drugs, and I'll be happy to answer any question you have regarding those oh. and, and other subjects too. Uh, like uh, for example, uh, rare spices. Uh, why do you think uh, extraterrestrials haven't made themselves known to the wider public? They have. I mean, they're all over the place. For example, did you know that Nancy Pelosi is actually a human being who knows two aliens and she won't admit it. So they make themselves public, but only in the private. And that's how they get you. It's called uh, Sysops, Psyops, Cyclops. It's called Cyclops because you can only see the alien with one eye. And most people with the exception of that guy, uh, Dan Crenshaw or whatever his name is, they can't see the aliens because everybody's walking around two eyes like a dumbass. You gotta have one eye. You gotta know Nancy Pelosi and the two aliens she knows. So you have to be part of the Democratic Party and be handicapped in order to see aliens. No, you can put your hand. I never said you had to be handicapped. Okay, and it's not politically correct to say that they're crippled disasters. Okay, you have to put one hand over your eye and say, "Hey, Nancy, want to have a party?" And she'll say, "Yeah." Sure. That's my Nancy Pelosi. I've never heard her speak. I think she sounds like that, though. She'll go, yeah, sure. And then you go over to your house, put your hand over one eye, and you can see the aliens. And they're up to nefarious tricks. I mean, no, no, wait, they're good. I meant they're good. <laughs> what, is their, what, what is their intention? If they are truly good, then what is their purpose to help us? Um, they want to bring back the circus. That's one of the things, because the circus is like out of fashion. Due to mm -hmm. the fact that, you know, they tortured the animals. Uh, the circus is, you know, by nature lame and things like that. But they want to bring back a circus and they want to have aliens in it. And they, what they also do is they like say the circus is free, but then microtransactions come in. And they're like, oh, you want to see a lion jump through a hoop? That'll be an extra $10. And you're already at the fucking circus, so what are you going to do? you got to pay $10 because your kid's like, I want to see the lion. And then they go, well, want to see the elephant? It's doing tricks. It's humping something. And the kids are like, yeah, I want to see the elephant. And before you know it, you know, you're mortgaging your house at the circus. Aliens are getting rich. You're taking our money. That's where the money flow goes. I I always say, 
look where the money goes in the circus. That's my saying, and I say it a lot, and it's really important to know this. Which, which aliens are these? Because there's several different species of aliens, apparently, but Two of them. which are these? Two kinds. There's the grays and the light grays. And I don't want to sound racist, but they do have different skin colors. And the skin colors designate to them which skin color they have. That's how they can tell. They're like, are you gray or light gray? You just like, you know, they look at each other and like, well, you're lighter than me, you're light gray. So it, it's the grays. Uh, the dark grays aren't interested because they they have other, <laughs> they, they have other nefarious purposes in mind. Let me tell you that. Is there a particular reason why the darker shade of grays would be a- My wallet's gone. And the dark grays, I suspect, did take it because no one was in here. No human was being as in, no human being was in my house. Can't find my wallet. Dark grays took it. So how could you be so sure there would be dark grays? That seems a bit um, uh, xenophobic. Well, I, I, I am xenophobic. I mean, I, I, I'm very at peace with myself. No, I'm afraid of being peace with myself, I guess, if I'm xenophobic. Um, and, but, but the thing is, I know what the grays are up to. I know what the dark grays are up to. I know what the light grays are up to. Light grays, regular grays, try to swindle you at the circus. You know, they pull in rubes. They pull in uh, a bunch of bumpkins from the sticks and depart them with the hard-earned money. I haven't even mentioned the games of chance, okay? They sucker you into a game of chance you lose every single cent that you had because they're all rigged. Never play a game of chance with a gray alien because you will lose. So, so I shouldn't play the ring toss at the circus is what you're saying. That's more of a game of skill. You, could, you can play the ring toss, but you won't win anything good. So three card Monty is a, a preferred game of the grays. Uh, well, actually they're from the future uh, where it's called four card Monty. So, uh, I mean, I, I don't blame you for being stupid because you don't know all the facts in the world, but four <laughs> card Monty is what they do in the future. And every single one of the cards is the instructions on how to play poker. So no matter what you choose, you're going to lose. It's called you choose, you'll lose. So, so the purpose of the grays, regardless of their shade is more or less to f fuck with Humans, not, not to do anything I, else. I don't use curse words. Uh, they swindle us. Uh, I, I'd like you to know I'm a very proud Christian, so I do not curse. Um, but when it comes to the aliens, sometimes I get really excited, uh, especially in the case of the one who stole my wallet. But I've been to the circus. I've, been to the, I've seen the aliens in the circus probably three times. Uh, and as the only customer at the circus, I can relate to you the information and my own experiences. That's why if you interview somebody else and like, like some dumbass in a movie, some, some, uh, what do they call them? Actors or whatever. Mm -hmm. If you interview them and you're like, what about the grays in the circus? They'll be like, what, what, what the fuck are you talking about? I mean, uh, what, what are you talking about is what they'll say. But you ask me. And I know the answers. So that's why I'm better than actors. Uh, do the grays have any the question? gender? <laughs> do the grays have any gender? Uh, yeah, all of them. They got it. They got it. They got every gender. They Everyone got all of them. Can, yeah, all of them. We're up to hey, what, 72 future or something? Genders. Future genders is what they have. So uh, how, do you know how the mating rituals work with the grays? Are you asking if I fucked an alien? I fucked an illegal alien. <laughs> not particularly if you, alien from space. Not particularly if you coupled with an alien, but maybe you watched it. Maybe you saw some. Maybe you saw an orgy of aliens. In full disclosure, yes. I mean, it was an attraction at the circus. I was there. Um, I had cash in hand, and the elephants were boring. The lion was boring. There was just some guy, just he was waving a wand, but he didn't do anything. That was boring. Mm -hmm. And they're like, hey, we got, we, got, we got aliens over here fucking each other. 
And I'm like, mm, no. And they're like, well, we'll reduce the price from $10 to five. And I'm like, you got yourself a deal. And so I went there. Uh, grotesque is one of the words that I would use to describe the situation. Uh, horrifying was another. Uh, because let me tell you, when it comes to genitalia, whoo boy. That's all I got to say about that. So it's not a pleasant experience. You would, you would, you couldn't make a market with alien porn. It was pleasant for the alien. It wasn't pleasant for me. If you're talking about human beings watching alien porn, I gotta say, it probably won't be all that popular. Because, well, first of all, it's in five dimensions. Okay. Now, the human being can only see, uh, uh, I think, uh, at max one dimension, I'm pretty sure. But aliens can see in seven different dimensions. And they're like, well, do you want to have sex in dimension five, six, or seven? And then the other aliens just like, well, let's go with five. And then they do it. You can't even see what's going on unless you got one hand over your eye, which allows you to see in the fifth dimension. And now let me tell you about the volcanoes. Yes, please. Okay, because this is the real sticking point here, okay? I, I got to be honest with you. A circus, not really that big of a deal, ultimately. But the volcanoes, now that's where the problem is. Because volcanoes are traditionally where we human beings store our hot lava. Because <laughs> where else are you going to put it? You put it in your basement, you know, your carpet gets ruined. Mm -hmm. And trust me, I've done that, 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 that's happened before to me. It was horrible. Uh, so we put all our hot lava in the volcanoes because that's a safe place to do it. But then the aliens fly their spaceships and also space cars, I'd like to point out, that aliens do have space cars. They're spaceships with wheels. The wheels are non-functional. It's mostly for show. No one's impressed, but it's mostly for show. They go into the volcanoes. They take our hot lava. What are we going to do without hot lava? Hmm? I, I don't know what what is the function of hot lava to be hot and it's to be lava if there's no hot lava inside of a volcano you know what it is empty and then we don't have volcanoes anymore and what are you going to do in a world without volcanoes build condos in them i guess no because they're far away and they're they're up high you can't do that and how are the people going to get out we don't have space cars I don't have space cars. You might. I might dox you and see if you have a space car. But the aliens are taking our lava. They're bringing it back to their home planet because that's what gets them off. And again, this goes to the alien sex. But lava is involved with it, okay? You know how human beings use lube? Yes. Well, I'm sorry that you have to do that. You know, all the vaginas I've had sex with have been moist. I'm sorry, I'm not. <laughs> you, you don't turn on women. That's your own thing. You know, I'm cool with that. That Everybody's got, you know, uh, you, you, you're, you're, you're unattractive. I'll tell you that right now. Ah, you're not okay. like swimmingly handsome like myself. Yes, I don't have the John Goodman good looks. I make the ladies wet is what I'm saying. Okay. Okay. And aliens, when they can't do that, they use the lava. That's where our lava is going for sex, for the aliens, the grays, every single, every shade of gray. That's so, the book. So obviously there must have been a point where the aliens ran out of whatever they used for lubricant. So how do you think they found our planet and found lava to be a good substitute? They were on their way somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And our planet was just in the way. You know, they come, uh, have you ever heard of uh, menudo reticuli? No, I have not. Okay, because I, 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 I think I just made it up. That's where they're from, okay? okay? And they're from menudo reticuli, and when you enter the seventh dimension and you're not fucking an alien with lava, you can travel all kinds of places, okay? Like, I'm trying to put this into perspective that, uh, that uh, you and other human beings would understand. Uh, you know how like the state of um, Montana is kind of big? Mm -hmm. It's bigger than that. 
Okay. If you can imagine that, I, I'm just trying to, I mean, you know, conceptual, help you conceptualize what's going on. Mm -hmm. So they can travel all over the place. They've been to, they've been to every, they've been to so many planets and they've been looking for space lube. And they finally, they're like, they came to earth. They're like looking around, they found a palm tree. They're like, well, that's not lava. They found a rock. They go, well, that's not lava. They found a loaf of bread. They go, that's not lava. They found some cabinets. They went to Home Depot. There's no lava there. They went to a volcano. They're like jackpot. That's why they're taking our lava. Uh, do you think there's going to be a point when they realize that they cannot suck this planet dry and they'll need to find another location to lube up? Well, I, I don't know if you, uh, we're going, there's a lot of sex talk in this alien chat, but I don't know if you know this, but lava does procreate. Mm -hmm. I mean, lava has sex with other lava. That's why there's still volcanoes. Because like, like if lava didn't have sex with other lava, all the volcanoes would be gone by now. I mean, it's, it's, a, <laughs> it's a simple fact. I mean, all the lava would be just absolutely gone. But we still have lava. We still have volcanoes. That's a scientific fact. You can look it up on wikipedia.com, see if we still have volcanoes. They're there. I've seen a photo of one once. Mm -hmm. Wait, that was a train. I can imagine seeing a photo of a volcano, though, is what's important. I got gotcha. you. So, Yeah. I've heard uh, through a very reliable source that uh, volcanoes may be the stumps of trees. Could you elaborate on that theory? Uh, volcanoes are the stumps of trees. And that's, that's it? Is there a reason why we would have trees that large? For show. You know, it's like, why do people get giant pickup trucks? I don't know. You know, so they made uh, a long time ago, Volcanoes were the trunks of the, 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 the tree trunks and the trees were huge. And then everybody said, these trees are fucking impractical as hell. And it's like all the people who build the pyramids went over to every single volcano tree and chopped it down just because they were mad because they were like, it's showing up all the other trees. They get a Christmas tree. It looks like shit compared to volcano tree. Can you top a volcano tree? No, I cannot. No. So they hit it with axes, uh, primitive tools, like uh, like manual chainsaws where they had to like manually pull the blade on it to move. Hmm. Because they were primitive as hell back then. You know, they, they, they didn't even have, they didn't even know how to use a remote for a TV, for example. Like you could, uh, you could travel back in time and give them a TV remote and they wouldn't even know what to do with it. Uh, do you think these uh, grays are capable of time travel? Do you think they they go back and forth between dimensions and between time to mess with humanity? Well, time's an illusion. You know, time is not real, okay? Like right now, what we're doing doesn't exist mm. because time isn't real. What you're imagining is particles, okay? This is called particle theory, okay? Okay. I myself have at least, uh, you know, in every particle, there's at least one atom, okay? I weighed myself the other day. I have over 2,000 atoms inside of me, okay? And so what you're seeing now is the relative movement of atoms to particles as they refer to each other in a conjunctive state. That's why time doesn't exist and that's why I cannot get cable in my new house either because they, they're like, how many atoms you have? And I'm like, I tell them how many atoms are in me. And they're like, well, you got to have like at least double that. It's like a credit score, uh, but with atoms. And so that's why time doesn't work. So you got to stop thinking of time as a concept and start thinking of the movement of particles in relation to the atoms that are inside of us and that move with the frequency relative thereof. What exactly is your background in, Mr. Bassett? What, what school did you attend or what degrees do you have to make you an expert in these fields? I, I, I went to science, <laughs> science university, and I majored in being smart. I got a PhD in it. 
Uh, I got two PhDs in it because I wanted to show how, how real smart I am. Uh, and then I got my uh, graduate degree in being real smart twice as well. Uh, I also English literature. I, I got a minor in that because it was easy and I might as well. Um, that's also where I learned to read. Uh, I, I, full disclosure, I don't read well. Um, and I write words and I don't know the meaning of them sometimes. But then I go back and I edit it and I still don't know the meaning of it. So I give up and I just like publish it anyways. You know, <laughs> what, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? How has your experience translated into real world success? Do you feel that you're a successful man? Oh, I have lots of real world success. I, 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 one time I went to Applebee's and they asked me if I'm the smart guy about uh, the volcano UFOs. And I mm -hmm. said, I said, damn right, that's me. And guess who got a free appetizer of chicken wings? It wasn't me. I had to pay the full ticket, but the people next to me in the booth got it. And they're assholes. You say it a coupon. Uh, do you feel that you're a happy man with the pursuits that you're that you're chasing right now? Well, I'm not chasing so much as exposing the truth, okay? Mm -hmm. um, I feel like I'm informing the world due to my smartness and, and intellectual smarts that, you know, I'm telling the world what needs to be told and hasn't been told to them because they're stupid. And so by me sharing my intellectual intelligence with them, I am helping people understand, you know, not only the swindles of the circus, uh, not only who stole my wallet, uh, not only the giant trees and the hot lava lubricant, uh, not how Applebee's fucking ripped me off and should have given me the chicken wings instead of the idiots in the booth next to me. Mm -hmm. I'm sharing the truth. So people will get more smarter like me. But, you know, when, when it comes down to it, it's not like, you know, I have to worry. It's a comparison thing. I have to worry about somebody uh, becoming more outsmarter than me because I know in the end, my intellectual smarts will still always be at the top. Because who went to smart school? <laughs> me. Who graduated from smart school? At least twice. Me. Not you. Not Joe Q. Public. I don't even know him. Well, Mr. Bassett, I've, I've run out of time for this uh, informative interview, but I'd like to thank you for being my guest today, but do you have any parting words of wisdom for those that are probably not going to watch this? Uh, yeah, numbers aren't real. And you can litter all you want. It's a lie. So you could just throw trash out on the streets and it doesn't matter. Those are my parting words. No, those are my parting words. Okay, very well. I appreciate it, Mr. Bassett, and I I'm look parting. forward to I look, forward to, I look forward to see. How do I hang up? I'm parting.